will have this recorded for anything who will look at this PSSP talk later. Uh, my name is Robert from Resant. I'm the project manager of PSSP project. I'm very glad to introduce Carlos Cernuda from Mondragon University today for our PSSP talk. And I'd say, yeah, just let's get started uh, with your introduction of talk. And then we can go into discussion with the people who are around here in the room and also in the live stream. Uh, but this, this will be the, the second step then. Carlos, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Carlos Tanuda from the University, as I was said. I made my PhD here in Yorkau uh, with Professor Clement some years ago. And I was in contact with Robert and Risen because of PAC and IMPACTS projects. So that was the first connection. And yeah, then uh, some time ago, uh, requirements for joining a project about metal additive, additive manufacturing came to us, and I contacted Robert because I knew they were doing, you were doing here those things. And uh, yeah, the contact happened, and then in the end, I managed to come to Vienna for a conference this week and I could visit. And uh, I will talk a little bit about two departments in the university. My department, data analysis and cyber security, uh, but really focus in industry, and uh, at the department of robotics and automation. Those are more linked to this method of construction than us, but both are more or less clean. And uh, I will try to make it short and as painless as possible. And just uh, something that I found interesting, uh, our university is private and it's a cooperative. So every single worker is the owner of the, of the university. Okay? And um, so all of us take the, the decisions, etc. And we are one cooperative uh, inside the Mondragon group that is a huge group of cooperatives with 75,000 people involved in the Basque country. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, contact to industry in the Basque country because the industry there is really, really powerful and almost half of it is part of the Mondragon group. Some history, uh, we are older than 75 years, the faculty of engineer, uh, but the university itself is from 1997. First, uh, each of the faculty became as a cooperative alone, and then they joined together to be able to offer studies and those things. Um, I just skip this thing about where we are and where we have buildings in the Basque country. Now we're moving to Bilbao. Interesting because it opens new lines because in Bilbao there's not so much industry, but there is a lot of things related to fintech, insurance banks, etc. And we are trying to move also towards that. And uh, well, as you will have the, the presentation, this is the list of studies that we offer, including mechatronic engineer that is quite new for us, and master degrees, and also uh, PhD still as well. <coughs> uh, the Faculty of Engineering it has these three locations in uh, Basque Country. Plus now Bilbao that is going to begin. It should be running now, but because of Corona, could be in January. But yeah, we will move also there. In fact, uh, Mechatronics is going to be there. And uh, the three main locations now. This is the main one in Mondragon, the one in Aldicia, and the last one in San Sebastián. That is, is together with uh, Orona, that is a, a company about uh, uh, elevators they're making, and their logo is exactly the shape of the, the building. That's the, shape, that's the Orona building, and yeah, with this solar uh, installation, we are uh, completely uh, with solar power. Uh, cool. Um, Important thing, uh, our funding is more or less split and we are <coughs> growing quite a lot, more than expected, even with this crisis in Spain, but the past country is completely a little bit outside that. And uh, the growth is around 3, 3.5 million per year. Uh, this year it was a bit higher. 
Uh, now we are going a little bit down because of this corona, but not that much. I think it's one million down or something like that. So very good. So not that bad. I mean, better than last year anyway. So it's okay. But well, everyone's having more or less problems. So yeah. And regarding the search and, and knowledge transfer, yeah, we will have around oh, over 15 million pesos of budget, and and the thing is that we have three type of relationship with, with companies. Uh, one is a long-term one, so the company accepts every single year to put that money without knowing for what, and then in the end it's PhD students or projects or corporations for uh, European projects, national projects, regional projects, whatever. But it's fixed for every year and you know it in advance and there's a really close relationship. Then there is one in, in the middle, uh, when well, you are not forced to, but you have, let's say, certain priority in, uh, with respect to other institutes, and then also companies can come and, and join for a project or, or, or get a PhD student or whatever. The good thing is that when, when we have a PhD student, we really reserve, uh, it's around 10% of the, no, 15% of the working time of one postdoc, who is the who is the director of that thesis, has reserved that time for working with the student and with the company. So it's, it's expensive for the company anyway, because they have to pay for that, but in the end it's, it's much better for the company that wants to get that guy afterwards working with them, and, and also for us because we can have better research there. And well, I skip this thing about our strategic plan and those things. And also I can skip this. The idea is that the students are working since the very beginning. Uh, in the master course, they are half time working in the company, so two and a half days, and half time with lectures. And even in even in during the the bachelor, in the break, this was always with companies. <coughs> and they are working, I think it's 25% of the time also in the company during the bachelor work. Well. So it's really huge connection and we wouldn't really apply. But that's a problem in the end. Because once they finish the bachelor studies, they leave. They don't want to make a master because they got a job. I think here you have problems that's quite similar. Mm -hmm. We have problems to get people for, for PhDs here, someone from it. We have really huge problems because they get a job and they are well paid and they say, okay, I don't want to make a master or, or even with a master, I don't want to make a PhD. But, but some of them, yeah, so it's quite okay. Uh, okay, the research groups. Uh, these are all the list of research groups we have in these five blocks. Uh, I will talk about uh, this data analysis and cybersecurity and these robotics and automation groups. Uh, but there are many other things, so but I cannot speak about them because I really don't know all of them in detail. But these two I will talk about, it's in my department and the department that's close to us and we share also a lot of things. This thing. The publications are growing, the GCR publications are growing, but well, it's good because it's, it was becoming really difficult. When I, when I came there, they told me, you maybe could be forgetting about researching or about research as much as you used to do. Because here we're really connected to, to companies and uh, it's really complicated. A lot of transfer, but not much uh, fundamental research. But well, uh, we are, some of us were pushing and we are, we are making it more or less. So it's, it's been okay. Uh, may I ask a short question? Sure. What, what publications uh, do you have? What journals or uh, conferences? Or that's uh, what? Well, the, the last one I think was this week, EDFA conference. So mm -hmm. emerging technologies and factory automation here in Vienna. Yeah. Uh, with one application I will show you later. And we, yeah, we have. Uh, I had also some collaborations with people from from here, from SCH also. And uh, I don't know the type of of, of journals they are. Uh, publishing my colleagues from cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm not really into it. But this year was mostly conferences, and uh, uh, we also have I also have a journal paper, but it's not related to this, related to health. So it is in a medical uh, journal uh, called Alzheimer and Dementia, mm -hmm. and it was. Uh, yeah, it's a national one. Eh? Is it a national? Yeah, they are international. Okay. Ones, yeah. And this one, in fact, has some impact factor of eight or something like that. But it's mm -hmm. quite big, or near this. It seems quite big. And uh, yeah, but that was about uh, predicting um, these anger attacks and these problems that some people with dementia have. So, uh, in order to stop those problems, what they do is put medication on the on the on these the people. And in the end, they are over medicated usually, and that's expensive, bad for the health, bad for the quality of life. So, they wanted to be able to predict when these attacks could happen to be more conservative in terms of giving medication. And it worked quite well, and we managed to publish it. It was three months ago, four months ago, that they were accepted. And those are the ones that they make them this, this year concretely, but nothing to do with. With what they're doing. This okay, year. thank you. These are the, the companies with our long term agreements. Uh, uh, maybe you know BATS, I don't know. Uh, CAF, they are making railways and quite a big company also. But I don't know. Um, the ones I'm working with are. Completely, Everlam, Matrici, Favara Mosate, and Ulma. Those are the ones I'm currently working with. Ah, and NSI, from automation. And these are the European platforms in which we are. Uh, EIT Manufacturing was the one who was the one who was uh, one of the calls for the one who were organizing this uh, consortium that in the end didn't work about metallurgy okay. manufacturing it was thanks to this uh, platform. Also the Big Data Value Association that it's really well positioned in in European Union and it's one of the references the European Union is taking to see the direction in which uh, research in big data will come, so we can more or less push a little bit in the direction we want. That is good. And it was really noticeable this year in the FOF calls from, from the European Union okay. that they did well quite towards our the direction we were trying to get. So you are really perfectly aligned here. <laughs> uh, the people more or less 400 people working, more than half are doctors, and uh, yeah, students around 4,000 or something. We are a really small university, but uh, well, small faculty, uh, because this is our faculty, uh, but yeah, doing a lot of things. And the evolution of the income in research and transfers. It's growing and growing and growing, much over our expectations. Uh, we work with four years strategic projects. So every four years we try to predict how we're going to move. Uh, one is ending now, ended in July. And one new one is beginning now, 2020, 2024. Beginning now. What is IT? Is it industry or? Uh, it's both uh, together, the sum. Yeah, and what, what does this I is, is for? Is uh, okay, uh, research, investigation in Spanish. Yeah, the Okay. That's research, research and transfer. Transference. Yeah, okay. I yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I should have changed it. That's in Spanish, investigation is in Spanish. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's the, 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 the red one is the sum of both. And also the, the number of European projects is growing. Um, this year, we, in our department, we had really bad luck, or I don't know if we made a bad job, because we tried four of these FOF consultants and none of them went through. 
<laughs> it went to meet well, well with, with partners. One was with Philips, and no. Another one was with, with Audi, and also no. But okay, it's really competitive, and it happens. Sometimes you ask for three, and you get three, and sometimes you ask for four, and you get none. So yeah. And our department completely. Uh, data analysis and cyber security. This was when we were in 2016, when the last began, when we tried to cover these things. Then two years later, life took us, well, not me because I was not there. I joined in December 2018. Uh, but we spent a little bit, also including health industry, and uh, yeah, that's the main new thing. And, and opening a little bit more with, for instance, adaptive HMIs. Uh, in fact, in this FFA conference last week, we have, we have two papers, uh, one of them about the, uh, design, automatic uh, industrial design, and one of them about adaptive HMIs with my colleague. And this is currently what's happening. So we have also this business logistics and social development part because we're moving to Bilbao and we had contacts with uh, a bank and an insurance company and we're interested in several projects. And we, we did some projects with them. It was the insurance company, in fact, I was working with them before. And then when I moved to Montalbán, they went to come to join also. And uh, the parts, uh, the part of intelligent system for advanced manufacturing, uh, comprises uh, predictive maintenance, uh, remaining useful life estimation, prognosis, all those type of things related to, to manufacturing. And with these are the companies we have contacts with regarding that. We have a PhD student full-time with Mercedes. This is a big uh, Mercedes factory close to us. Uh, with Philips, we are in some European projects as well uh, about uh, predictive maintenance. With our Arasate, we have a complete project about vision in X ray data. In X ray data, we'll talk about it later. Um, regarding uh, meta processing, water treatment, etc., we're working with Pago de Berman and MSI. And uh, MSI, uh, concretely, they are um, like an intermediate partner between the companies and, and, and the researchers, let's say. And um, what they are doing is uh, monitoring and controlling, but uh, when they need something really out of the state of the art is when they contact the task. And what we did with them was uh, they wanted to control uh, the air, the air in, a, in a factory, so they had uh, certain machines to put air in. Some of them work at, at uh, a constant speed, some of them at variable speed, and they had a, a lot of requirements. So they, they didn't want to make predictive maintenance, they want to do maintenance uh, with fixed times, and they want to have every machine working at most one amount of hours before that. So they wanted to control it automatically in such a way that uh, also the requirements of the air condition could change, and then they have to adapt also. And they wanted to know uh, which machines should be in each moment working, and then when you have to switch or change, uh, say send automatically down those orders. And we made a multi-objective evolutionary algorithm to do that for multi-objective optimization. And it was quite okay because you can handle the restrictions. For instance, they always wanted to have one of the dynamic machines working all the time because then it's fast to regulate. And they wanted to make the machines work as much as possible close to the limit, but not exceeding it. And, and having all the machines available, more or less available until the, the maintenance moment. So you have to handle all this at the same time. It was challenging, but we did the best thing. In the case of business, we are doing a lot of things. Uh, customer behavior with Orea Northly and also with Theta. And with Laboral Cucha, there is a bank in Laguna de Insurance Company. We are also doing things 
regarding with the insurance company regarding prediction of accidents and, on, and also customer behavior. And with the bank, that is quite crazy, they want to classify all the movements they have that are over 30 million per month. And they want to do it not real time, but really fast because they want to make some analysis and show it in the, in the online banking system to the customer. And that's what we're doing with them. Health, we're mainly working with uh, a hospital, a public hospital, who is really, really interested in, in health in old people, diagnosed with dementia, and we're doing a lot of things with them, including this paper I talked about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I mean, since the population is getting older and older, and the past country, old people are quite healthy, uh, so they, they really get quite old, so dementia is coming, in the end, because it is not depending on, on if you have a healthy life or not, you have it anyway. So the amount is growing and they are really interested in make, making their life as good as possible. And, and we also like that much. So I'm really happy to join that, that those projects. Uh, this is the public health system in the Basque Country. And these are uh, like spin-offs of companies being made. And also anomaly detection. Uh, the anomaly detection, we are mainly focusing it in communication in the industry. For instance, uh, be sure that the data is going in the same way and safe and clean from the origin to the place where you're going to store it to analyze it. This is doing really well in media. There is a partner of us in some projects. Uh, because many companies are using this blockchain uh, but blockchain, using blockchain for those things is like killing flies with a canyon. You don't need that. It's too powerful for that. And they are doing, they are using uh, homomorphic encryption that is much lighter and it's enough to secure, to check that the data in origin is the same that you get in, in, the, in your data warehouse. What does mean the homomorphic encryption? I know, but. It's a it's a complete time or type of, of, of encryption. I'm, I'm not really uh -huh. okay. I don't really know the details. It's, it's the name homomorphic. Yeah, yeah, that's the name. I don't know why, because for me homomorphic from mathematics has another meaning. Yeah. But so it was strange for me. But I prefer not to ask because they may quickly uh, cut this later. This guy can really be speaking for hours and hours and hours. So like, if you ask him, probably we will be hearing him for two hours playing it, and it's better to <laughs> leave it. There you go. OK. And uh, I mean, in the end, uh, even when it's focused to, to, to security or to information security, anomaly detection, was, that was the original uh, application. But in the end, we end up using it for spam filtering, but also for for fault detection, because in the end, there are anomalies in production, so it's more or less similar. You can reuse. And this is our estimation for the next four years. We are also including explainable artificial intelligence. Um, intelligent user interfaces, we are trying to make it to push harder in these adaptive HMIs and, and make them also smart. Um, Moving also into reinforcement learning because it's really useful for that. Doing a lot of optimization, that's my fault. I really love optimization and I pushed hard for that. And we are trying to use uh, optimization in, in, in process analytics, basically. Also lightweight, artificial intelligence. Models that you can put in any single place, like an Arduino if you need, and that could work. And that's interesting because you, you can take this artificial intelligence even almost to the sensor level if you, if you want. And yeah, this is the part regarding data analytics, the part regarding security. Uh, also a little bit in cryptography, we want to move another homomorphic here. Mm -hmm. This I know what it is. This is mathematics. Uh, this uh, homomorphic cryptography is something really interesting, but it's it's not working now full, fully. I mean, uh, the idea of this homomorphic cryptography is that you could you could get encrypted data, 
make operations with it without seeing the real data and then if the guy makes the same operation with encrypted data we get the same result so you can make operations with the data without the, the encrypting the data so without seeing it mm -hmm. uh, currently you can do sums and But they are really working because if you could make a, even a simple uh, predictive model, uh, like a decision tree or whatever, uh, with this data without seeing it, is really safe. That's really, really safe for the company. You could use their data without any problem because you cannot really see it. But it's, this is, there's a lot of research in this area. Mm -hmm. But we are, I was interested personally, um, but one guy who came to the department short time ago was really interested on that. He was working on that, so we are trying to to book there. But it is tentative. Um, this I already said. The main things in education we have is a business data analytics degree began that year. I will be coordinating it this year. A master in data analysis, cybersecurity, and cloud computing, also a second year. This, this one, and we have several courses for industry. Uh, big data for industry, for instance, it's a one, 120 hours course, and we made it four times already. But we have a lot of courses for industry because this uh, uh, digital enterprise, digital companies, uh, it's a public uh, institute from the Basque Country. They're really putting our funding to make uh, to make a for formation for the for the companies digitalization and try to push that in that dimension. Well, equipment, we have a laboratory where you can test any single network you want and check for security and those things. Oh, let's keep it. And this is, these are our numbers. Um, let's keep it as well, okay? The publications. So long since it's taken, because it's, this is our, the first department. <laughs> Uh, I put mainly the projects I can speak more because they are my projects. Uh, this is the project with the bank. They wanted to classify the movements automatically using using natural language processing. And uh, so we used a rule-based system for first classification and then the ones that are not classified using natural language processing we could classify them and then also make predictions with them. And the bank wants to predict the income and expenses curves of the, of the customers to help them, that's the excuse, to help them, offering them uh, some financial products that they could need. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the, the way to sell it, I guess, no? Um, okay. Uh, also, with the insurance company, they wanted to predict accidents and to make root, root cause analysis. In the end, the root cause analysis for the accident is the same for root cause analysis in fall detection if you want to do it. It's the same thing, the same idea. Uh, it needs explainable artificial intelligence. And we could manage to, to really predict accidents in, in, in blocks of customers. Mm -hmm. Not the accident itself, not if you will have an accident or not, but the cost associated to those accidents. So you can identify groups of, of customers that are potentially risky for your business because they are potentially more, uh, has more possibility or probability of having an accident. And it worked quite well. And they also want to, now when, when you go to an insurance company for, a, for an insurance, they offer you like 10, 15 things, and in the end you get an overload of information. They want to do this uh, only with the first data that the customer gives you, name, uh, where do you live, uh, Type of job, etc. Only with that information, they want to to check which of the possible offers they could give him or her uh, is going to be the more probable that it's going to end up in an insurance policy signed. And then they can offer only three, four options that are the most uh, probable ones. That's what they want to do. And we are working also with what the objective evolutionary algorithms because. Uh, it's clearly what the objective. You want the probability to be high, but also you want the money you get for it to be high. So, and those are usually conflicting. So you want to ask the guy for the highest price you can do, you can you can get, but also with highest probability of him saying yes. 
And there are also other, other engagements that you could be using. Recommend assistance for sales management also. Uh, also, demand prediction in two levels. The distribution level, Orbea is uh, making bicycles. And uh, they produce the bicycles, but they don't sell directly. They, they sell them to the shops, and then the shops sell them to the final uh, customer. And they want to predict, and some of those uh, shops usually order a lot of bicycles, too many, and Orbea policy says, if you don't sell it, they get it back. And then I sell it myself in the website by a really low price, and they want to avoid that. And the thing is that if you really predict well how the, the, the shop is going to sell, you can adapt the amount of bicycles you give to them, and then you don't have this problem, because they, they only produce the bicycles uh, on demand. I want 10, not 10. And they, want, they don't want to produce all of them. Mm -hmm. and, and then final customer demand also for Orkley. Orkley is making huge valves. I think they, they produce the, the biggest valves in, in Europe. But they also produce the one in, in the radiators, but they, they produce huge valves also. And uh, using historical data and time series, they wanted to, to predict the customer behavior. And this is the, the project we presented in EFA this week, together with the Lean Center of Mechatronics and the Robert Gordon University Everything, and also Tika Tech, that is the research and development part of Ticaucho, that is the company. They are making um, they are making these bushing uh, rubber pieces for for the for the suspension system of the car. And it's this piece here. And this piece is intended to make those metal pieces not to collide and keep them more or less safe in the place. What they were currently doing for design is you have a requirement here. You have, for instance, variable one and two that the, 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 the outer and the, and the inner radius are fixed because this is space you have, but the rest of the shape you, have, you are free to design it. And what they do for designing is they have to take into account that there are four types of forces. So axial, one part going up and the other down, radial, uh, torsional, and also cardanic, like squishing. Uh, and each of them at the same time produce stiffnesses, and they have to be inside certain limits to be quality and OK. And what they used to do is, using Abacus, they made uh, these uh, finite element simulations that take hours in simulation. And in, in, when they make a design, one guy says, OK, I will try these parameters. Parameters. I make my my simulation, and I see if it's okay. If it's okay, I keep it. If it's not, I change it as I want. So something really huge, right? Because if that guy gets retired or sick or whatever, who takes the decision? So what they wanted to make is uh, making a surrogate model, so a predictive model that can be able to predict that simulation. You need data from the simulation itself. But then you run a model, and this model instantaneously give you a prediction of what this simulation would say. Uh, in order to do that, you need training data. And in order to get training data as small as possible, because it's really costly to get it in time, uh, we made a design of experiment approach with the current catalog of designs and studying, uh, covering the gaps between the designs they have in a reasonable way so that we get a train data that was not so big and we could really really mimic really well the behavior, the non-linear behavior. Mm -hmm. It was yeah uh, R square around 0 0.97 in test data. It was really well. I mean you can you don't have much extrapolation on possibilities, but we have six designs and any design inside those limits that was not known was working really they if you could do it with, uh, together with our neighbors, the LCM Center of Mechatronics, just in it. Yeah, they, they were involved also. Yeah. Yeah, they were involved. Uh, because uh, one guy that used to work with them uh, now moved to Robert Gordon University. Okay. And this was the guy we were in contact with. And yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Uh, the, the next step with this is to automatize also the design. So not the guy taking the decision and, and have the prediction automatically, but also a, a multi-objective evolution algorithm can do the, the, the selection of the probable designs, taking into account more things like 
production costs, material costs, and those things that here and again, the guy tries, and once a design it's okay because of stiffnesses and, and those requirements, technical requirements, it's okay. Maybe, the, the, maybe you could have another design that is much cheaper because it needs less rubber or is faster to be produced, but you never know. So this is the, the idea of the future step with that. Uh, the one related to X-ray. This is more from the other group, I would say. This project ended up in us, but it's, it should be in the table, in, in the robotics automation table, but it ended up with us. Um, they wanted to find, uh, they wanted to check for false detecting. So it's not false detection. The X-ray machine has a false detection system, but it's too conservative. Half of the pieces were said to be uh, bad. Uh, why? Because they don't want to make any piece that is bad tagged as good. It is really risky because those pieces were, were, in, were, they were knuckles in, in the suspension system of a car. So if you say that it's okay, in the end it's not and it cracked, then it could be really risky. But, but okay, this already is saying that half of the pieces were wrong. Those pieces you have to, the aluminium, you have to melt them again and reuse the aluminium and you waste around 7-8% of money. So they wanted us to check only the images of pieces that were marked as wrong and say it's really wrong or it's not. That's what they wanted to do. And we got a, it's not a, it's not a deep, deep neural network, but it's a combination of four that was designed by Facebook, Artificial Intelligence Group. And they use it for image segmentation. So if there's a problem in the in the in the X-ray image, you, maybe you could find with segmentation where the problem, the problem is. You, you can use the Facebook use it for finding people in pictures or videos or finding trees or other cars, but you could use it all, also for finding bubbles or for finding cracks. Or those things. This was the idea. The original idea was not ours. The original idea was developed by some guys with this publicly available data set. Uh, you, they use transfer learning and they get a network from this COCO, Common, common Objects in Context, that was a, a repository of images from Microsoft. The, the guys used it to, to re reuse or to transfer uh, the network from this data set to the, this X-ray data set. And we did the same thing from here to here. That was our idea. So if someone took a good network and could make it good here, we did the same thing to try to make it good here. Yeah, what was the second step? A second step. What, second what, transfer what was the, 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 from X-ray, what is it, the, the right one? Then? Another X-ray, but our X-ray. Okay, yes. another X-ray. Yeah. yeah, but this is X-ray that's publicly available, mm -hmm. but this job was done. So if, if this worked with this difference between images, this it could be much easier to work. And it worked, mm -hmm. worked really well. The first, uh, in the first month working in one line, the first month working in one line, only two pieces that were that our system said that they were right were wrong. The rest were perfectly classified all of them. And how many pieces? I don't know a lot. It's a little, I don't know because uh, it was uh, online working there, only one line. Uh, the thing is that in the end the project ended and they were happy with that and they have a collaboration with a precision development group that is inside also Fagor, so they continue with the work. So now I don't know. We, we, made, it, the, the, make, we made it work and then they are also developing it in other places, and, but then it's easier. The, the, the hard work it was done already, so but we were really happy. And we forgot the language have one of those long term connections, so we still are working on other things. And that's good. And this is what we did in the end. We took small portions as pictures, and each of them we tried to do it, and overlapping ones. So you try to assign a probability of having a problem in each of the parts, and if you are over a certain threshold, then you tell it as a problem. This is our boss. And uh, the contact, in case you need, or you want. Okay. 
on the other group, I will make it fast, okay? Because I cannot speak more a lot about the project because I don't have my project, so here I will be faster. But probably this is going to be more aligned with what you need, so <laughs> I will need to be here. Uh, this is their spine now. They are making image processing, also working in robotics for control. Uh, intelligent autom automation, they are using artificial intelligence. We are not researching on it. When they need something related to research, they contact us. So we are really close together in those things. And also process automation. Using digital twins and control systems, and monitoring, sensoring, etc. They are making a lot of things in virtual sensors. And Um, their numbers, they are a bit smaller than us, uh, the group, they are less people, but they have more PhD students. Uh, yeah, it's, so it's, this is the context. Okay? Luca Escalata is the name, and yeah, he was a former member of Doltec. I don't know if Doltec was in some projects with you, mm -hmm. I don't know. And he was in fact, during that time, he was in Ortec, so that's why he knew you. Um, okay, these are the things they are doing. Uh, 3D vision, they are doing ro this, the second one, this I can speak about it. Robot trajectory planification. Uh, what they wanted to do is, uh, between two tasks of the robot, that if there are certain safe position, to make the robot in, I mean, if, if you want to, you cannot take a robot apart and do it like this waiting, because it's really supporting a lot, making a lot of force to not bend. So there are certain safe positions where you save energy, to wait for the next task, and they want to find the best way to move from one to the other, and they were using genetic algorithms. So they contacted us for using genetic algorithms for this task. And the rest of the things are not really speaking a lot, but you probably know more than me, those things. Uh, with Dortec, they are doing process automation, sorry, this is in Spanish, but it was a picture, so I'm not changing the language. But it's about uh, quality control based on data, and automation of, project, of processes, and quality control at the same time. Also with Dortec, they are, okay, this is in Spanish again, sorry. Uh, I can try to change it to English and send it to you, okay? Um, they are using, using images. They are trying to do more or less the same thing what we're doing. Uh, trying to control the temperature. The cool I, I don't really know exactly how it works. But it's done with uh, image recognition, yeah. camera based. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. They are mostly working with, with images. That's why I said that in the other project we were doing, it should not be our project; it should be their project. That's why. In the beginning, it was not meant for that, and in the end, it arrived in this because of the needs of the company, and it was in our side. So. They also predictive maintenance, and this is also related to the to the application I mentioned before about the the genetic the use of genetic algorithms. They were also using genetic algorithms here for some things, um, and we were also helping them with that. With that, they are but here they are trying to to estimate the degradation uh, in the in the connections of the arms of the of the robots, and this is uh, this robot is our robot because I know him from seeing in our installations, but uh, we are using that as a benchmark uh, for the robots from the this factory in, in Mercedes. In Victoria. They have also we have a PhD student there, and they have two PhD students there. This is an application I mentioned before about the, the 
waiting position of the of the robot, uh, trying to find uh, to be energetic efficient, and also trying to make the connection of the robots last longer because we are not forcing them too much or as less as possible. Also about the trajectory, I think this also could be related to to your part, I mean, to, to the metal ID manufacturing, because it has to be made with a robot and they are working in control of the robot's head. And Is it control or also optimization of trajectories for certain tasks? Both things. Okay. They do both things because completely because they asked me about our multi objective optimization approaches. Okay. That's why I know. And, and this happened in June. So Luca contacted me in June because he knew that I was doing those things. And yeah, he, he asked me about it. So, uh, I don't mean that they are doing now because they're asking in June, so I guess it will happen. Uh, yeah, because in August we have holidays, so we can see each other. Here I'm lost, really. Yeah. I have to admit that here I'm completely lost. Yeah, to the tree. Yeah. I'm sure you know much more about this than me. Uh, when I saw this uh, slide, because they sent it to me, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> so, yeah, also related with images, but, but I really don't know exactly what they're doing. And maybe if you need information about that, it's better to contact him. Yeah, you have no homogeneous illumination here, but you you, you use some some patterns which you uh, project on the surface, what I can see here, uh -huh. and from that patterns you. I think you, you try to, to, to get the curvature of, of yeah, that, the surface. Yeah, that's, that's yes, here. The superficial gradient, the curvature, and the three uh, rubber session, yes. But what I don't get is the rest. The technical parts for me are mm -hmm. unknown. <laughs> so they're obscure. And uh, oh, this is the same application. Mm -hmm. Other information, and I really don't understand much. And this, yes, because uh, here I was involved somehow, because this was a first time, uh, it was a master student who was making the master thesis on that, and I was in the, one of the evaluators. And also, we are doing one PhD, some things, and I was in, the, in Spain in the PhD, in the half part, you have an evaluation period, and I was also involved in the evaluation of this project, this thesis. And this is related to uh, solar cells. Okay, they're trying to they're trying to make quality inspection in solar cells using images. The thing is that uh, it's one shot learning, so it's incremental, and they have not much training data. So those are the challenges. And since it is deep learning, it's really challenging. So what you have to do is make a lot of transfer learning, get good networks, and try to try to freeze some layers and try to play with other layers to make transfer learning. And then you could be able to do it. Uh, you could be able to do it theoretically, uh, and they do it in practice, you know, so the results uh, with few data. But you need a you need a good starting point. You need a good network from another application, similar one, and then it works. Or from another plant, that it works. And This is what you do with anomalies, detection, the original image, the reconstruction of the, how the image should be, and then they detect the anomaly. So they can say that there's something happening there. That's the idea of this approach. More similar info, and how they get from the original image to the image where the problem is located. It's quite similar approach to the one we made, at least in the, in the main steps. Not in the way to make those steps, but in, yes, in the, in the main steps. And also, this is also related to metal IT manufacturing, I guess, right? They are trying to modify the metal using pressure and they want to 
they want to check that the surface is flat enough. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, this is the piece finally made, I don't guess. It's not really during the, maybe it could be applied during the process of, of the ID uh, manufacturing. I don't know. In my ideas, uh, it rather could be in, in, a, in a big process like for Stalpina, in the, in the real the rolling of the metal, sheet metal, or also aluminium, wherever. Yeah, I, I saw this working, not, not in these uh, flat metal pieces, but I saw some similar application working in, in a company that's called Tubatex, that makes metallic tubes. Okay. And uh, they are not they are not making a flat uh, process, but they are making a process to make the tube completely straight. Okay. And it was yeah quite similar the application they were doing. This is more about the same and how they check it with the cameras. I don't know how they measure the vibrations because they are measured here. But and also welding inspection. Uh, these were uh, these cross beams that you, you have in a in a warehouse. Uh, they are really holding a lot of weight. And uh, they are made using welding, and they used to make inspection based on on images only. They are working quite a lot with little twins. This also is also linked with us because we are making also in one project we are making. Uh, imagine you have a SCADA system, but you want to make it a little bit clever, let's say. So instead of only showing you things, can also providing you with options you could have or next steps to make if you are in control of central or certain pro part of the process. And we were making uh, like a central SCADA system uh, in which uh, if the user is related to the security part, he can see security alarms that can be triggered. And this was made making a digital twin that consists of making a whole 3D replic or mimic of the factory, of the whole factory. And you could control it using virtual reality. So you could, uh, you have a plan, I tried, in fact. You, you put the glasses and you see all the factory, and if you touch one part, this part of the factory increases, and then you can see each of the machines. You can see if they are working well or not, based on this SCADA information. And if there is a problem, it, it can be there form of a light or even a sound and uh, depending on the user gets its alarms if it's related to cyber security only gets alarms if there is a connection cut it between a sensor and for instance and the, and the machine or if you are in the, in the production you get also um, you get also information about how to proceed uh, also if there is an alarm you can see if it's green uh, yellow or red if it's really hot to stop production on that part also gives you information of which part you have to stop in order to less as less damage to the production as possible and avoid the problem. All those information together. So they, they were making the part of the digital twin and we're making the part of this optimization and uh, anomaly detection and etc. With Lotec we are also working in this zero defect manufacturing. <coughs> in electro degradation analysis in welding with aluminium. Um, I don't know also the details about about this. But what I know because I asked is that they were they were not doing uh, remaining useful life estimation, they were doing only they were doing only uh, quality. So, well, this is flux thermography in, in 
in Spanish. And uh, they were trying to look to, to find bottlenecks in the assembly line based on the, on the data. And uh, try to find the actions to avoid those bottlenecks before they were going to be critical. So and they had certain rules on how to act on the production and then uh, try to estimate which of those actions they could take, actions that do not disturb the production, but they can also uh, avoid these bottlenecks. They were identifying them and they wanted, they wanted also to be able to predict them. And this is when, where we also took part a little bit. You know, we take part because we are working currently on that. Waiting, waiting for good data because we are only in some small portion. And yeah, they want to go from just watching what's happening to try to predict what's going to happen. But this is still work in progress. And I think this is the last one. Uh, about build on sensor. But it's also related to this digital twin and to, to prediction in the end. They want to, to work in to make monitoring based on both physical and virtual operations. There are quite a lot of, of uh, companies around us that has uh, systems where they want to put sensors and it's not possible, like ovens or those things, it's complicated. And uh, virtual sensoring is working quite well. And they do all the work in virtual sensoring regarding models, but when they need something a little bit more concrete, special, or, or the state of the art not working well, then they contact us and we work together on that. And we, when we have a problem with related to the imaging, usually we contact them and we are really close. In fact, we're in the same big room, so we share everything. Mm -hmm. We also share all the computer networks and other things, so, so we're really, really connected. Luca, sorry, took almost an hour. It's a perfect one hour talk. <laughs> no way. Do you also have a slide with your contact data? Yeah, I have one with my boss contact data that was in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but I can I have, I have uh, we will set cards, but we <laughs> will set anyone who is interested in direct contact with you. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks a lot. Carlos? Yeah.